All right, so I'm going to show how to open up another one of these um, MSI laptops, uh, GS63 Stealth 8RE. So apparently this seems to be a common issue, so it must be some defect. Um, maybe the fan design, it lets in more dust or something. But So um, the bearing on this, the grease is going bad. So first what you want to do to open it up is remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, don't forget the one under the screw. So 15 screws total. Once you do that to remove the cover, um, what you want to do is from the front here where the screen opens, um, you got to pull on this case this way while lifting up. So usually I'll just use my fingernails between the gap here. And then while you're pulling on it, um, you should be able to hear it pop while you're doing that. So just go along so you can hear the pops, okay? Just like that, okay? Once you get this open like this, you'll want to switch to the back. So on the back, they have this um, interesting hinge design. So here, um, what you do is you get your finger underneath. So while you're kind of putting a little bit of pressure on the back cover, not too much because you'll bend this. This is made of metal, so if you pull too hard, it'll actually bend, and then it won't be able to bend back easily. So while you're pulling on this, you get your fingernail and slide between here, and then you can pull out um, these little ex extruding parts, protruding parts that um, go into the metal case here. So you just do that. You go halfway. Once you get that half done, switch to the other side. Okay, do the same thing. Get your fingers under there, pull on this, and then just go along. Okay, so now that you got both sides out, um, the back hinge cover will flip forward just like this, and then it comes out. So when you put this back, you have to put this side in first again, just like before, and then you rotate it. So you get these because there's these little hooks in, right here. So you get those in first. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so get those hooks in first, and then you put this down. And to connect this, because on the very edge of these, there's like a little cup part that grabs into the, um, the mechanism, this flap that sticks out. So this part, if you can see, has little notches in it. So, but this, this side, it grabs it like this instead of having a thing go into it. So you have to make sure when you put that down, that you get that side in first. So pretty much you make sure that goes in the slot. And then while you're holding this piece inward to keep it in the slot, then you can slowly pull these out and then push this cover in. Okay, that's how you would get this little hinge cover back on. All right, so now that we got that and the other half off, this should be easy to lift off just like this. Okay, so the cover just looks like that. All right, now what you want to do is disconnect the battery and then hold the power button to drain any power so you don't damage any internal parts. So they have some adhesive at the bottom here, here, and then one on the side here. So the way I found to get this out is you use a pry tool or something thin and wide like this, and you go between the battery here. And then while you're pulling up the battery here, push down on the adhesive close to the battery to get it to unstick. So while you're prying this, just push on the adhesive, make sure it releases from the battery, okay? And then once you get the bottom ones done, reinsert the tool closer to this side, so that way you can pry this up. And while you're prying this up, then you can push on the adhesive on this side, okay? So you can see it's these shiny black pads. So once you get the adhesive up, the battery will pop up like this, okay? And then you can go close to the connector, um, as close as you can, just grab it and then wiggle wiggle the connector and it will come out. So just like this. Okay, just keep wiggling. Make sure, grab on the cables. Okay, can see the other side. And just keep wiggling, just like that, and the connector will come out, okay? So here you can see the battery. It's all nice and clean inside on this model. Uh, but here you can see the adhesive. So there's actually some adhesive here as well but you can't really go underneath. So when you pry it, it slowly peels it up. Um, 
the design is not really good because the adhesive actually, um, since you can't push down on it, it peels the adhesive strip away from the rest of the foam. But this side, since you're able to kind of push it down, you can see these adhesive strips are perfectly intact. Okay, once you got that, then you want to hold the power button again just to drain any power. Um, since the cover's off, it's missing two screws from the hinge, so be careful when you open it. Just open it slowly so you don't put too much strain on it. Okay, and then just hold the power button to drain it. Okay, where was the power button on this model again? Or maybe it's on the side, huh? Yeah, okay, so the power button on the side on this model. Um, sometimes the power button doesn't activate when you have the screen closed. So make sure the screen is opened and then hold the power button for a few seconds. Okay, once you do that, you can put close it back down and then start removing other components. So here you can see if you can use like a non-conductive pry tool, something that doesn't have metal, just in case you don't want to damage anything on the board. So I like to use my fingernails, but you can use anything. Um, if you know what you're doing and you're careful, you can use metal pry tools, but just be very careful that you don't um, short anything because sometimes capacitors can hold power for quite a while. Okay, so to remove the hard drive, you lift up this little tab. Once you lift that, you can pull this back. Okay, set that out and then lift the hard drive out. If you can't lift the hard drive out, what you can do is you can take a small screwdriver. I mean, I can use my fingernail and then lift from the corner here, but if you can't go where the screw hole is, and then you can use the screwdriver to leverage it out just like that. Okay, set that aside. And we'll disconnect this connector. This is for the LED board on the front. So all the LEDs, okay. So if for some reason you take this out, um, take this apart and put it back together and the LEDs don't work, you might have forgot to plug this back in or maybe the cable got damaged. Okay, then you got this connector here for the power button. So we'll disconnect that and then pull that out. If there's like the other one, there's an adhesive holding it to the side. So it's gonna be kind of not much wiggle room. So you can remove the cable. Okay, usually you grab it and you just wiggle it and pull. All right, so that one's out. All right, then you got the CMOS battery here. To remove that, I'm gonna have to undo the screws for the board. So we're going to go and remove the other connectors first. Okay, so we'll go here, peel up this yellow adhesive here. All right, I think this is like a thermal um, protective tape and also electrically, um, was it non-conductive insulating, insulate, insulation. <laughs> so it's supposed to prevent things from falling on it and shorting out, I think. All right, so this one, apparently they stuck it to this little rubber piece that it's stuck really strong. So I'm gonna leave that if I don't, if I can. All right, so peel that up, disconnect these just like that. Disconnect this one just like that. All right, actually I'm gonna have to peel this adhesive off. Okay, let's see how can, it doesn't want to come off, oh, there we go, okay rubber piece down. All right, set that aside. All right, so this cable is for this board here, which connects this, which is also part of the keyboard. So this keyboard actually has two connectors. There's one connector here and then one connector here. Um, and then you have the trackpad cable here. All right, remove that. And then this board on the side with the three USB 3 ports and the audio jacks, it actually has two connectors as well. So one is here and then the other connector actually goes underneath. So we're going to remove this one. So the other connector is underneath the motherboard. All right, so we'll set that up like this. And I'm most likely going to have to um, disconnect this side first because this side goes underneath it's not 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 much wiggle room okay so what we're gonna do is we'll remove this one screw here all right and then we'll lift this board out it goes at an angle oh we'll have to remove the speaker first so this speaker it's not held in by anything just lift it up and then you can set it aside all right and then this one you can lift it out just like that, flip it over, same thing, flip the little latch, just like that, and then you can pull this cable out. 
Okay, so I'm going to take this cable out first and set this aside. All right. All right, so this one, the thing is held down with this adhesive. So same method, um, while you're peeling it, just push on this with the with the tool so it doesn't peel up the foam, the adhesive foam. Okay. And then stay close to the connector. You don't want to like flex it too much. Okay, so just like that. So actually this adhesive still peeled away. Okay. All right, so this connector, we're gonna have to um, lift the whole board and then slide this out. So here's the speaker connector. So this connects both speakers, the speaker. So this is the left speaker. It runs along the cable and then the right speakers on this side over here. Okay, so now that the speaker's out, I'm gonna leave that back down. All right, now we need to remove this board as well, the SD card slot and the network um, ethernet port. So we'll take that one out. Okay. There's a little um, tape holding this in place. So to remove this, you're going to have to um, undo the adhesive here. So let's see here. They make this adhesive tough, so I'm going to have to use like a needle to get underneath. If you do this, be very careful with the connectors. So now you can peel up this black tape. Okay, once you got that tape peeled back, you can flip up this latch and then you can pull this whole connector out. All right, and set that aside. All right, then you got the LCD cable. Um, again, for the LCD cable, be very sure to open up the computer and hold on the power button to drain any power. Um, then you got the keyboard backlight here, I believe. So flip up that latch. Pull that out. Okay. All right. Now that you got all of those out, you want to remove all the screws for the motherboard or the logic board. So there's one screw here. Actually, we'll have to take out the wireless card first, but we'll take out all these screws as well. So one screw there. Oh, again, this model, um, they don't really mark here where the screws came from. So what I like to do is take like um, a thin Sharpie, or I guess you can use any Sharpie. And then after I take the screw out, I just mark it so I remember where the screw came from. Though if you're going to record it or watch this video, then you should know where the screws came from as well. So you can just look at it, rewatch it. Okay, so we'll take this screw out. screw out here like that one okay we're gonna have to take the wireless card out so lift up the adhesive all right you don't need to peel this adhesive off and then for the wireless cards you just go at the back of the tail get it try and get as close as you can and then just pull it up and the tail will the connector will release okay same with the other one so on this model, the color of the wire matches up with the color of the triangles. So just know the white wire connects to the white triangle and the black wire connects to the black triangle. All right, so now we'll remove this screw. Oh, I might have forgotten to turn off the notifications. Let me stop those so it doesn't keep beeping. Okay, sorry for that cut. I had to turn off my notifications because someone messaged and I was going to keep beeping. So, okay, so the wireless card, after you remove the screw, set it aside. Okay. And then the, the wireless card, you have to lift it up a tiny bit so it clears the, the screw mount. And then you can wiggle it out just like that. Okay, and then set that aside. All right. All right, and then underneath the LCD connector, um, there's another screw being blocked by this. So peel up the adhesive, move it aside, and then undo this little latch. Once you do that, you can pull this connector out. There's an adhesive holding this, so while you peel it up, 
just um, stay close to the adhesive and slowly peel. You don't want to fold the cable, okay? Just like this. Okay. All right, just like that. So we got the screen cable, LCD cable out. All right, then there's two more screws. So there's one here. So remove that one. This one as well. And then there's one screw holding this fan here. All right, move that one as well. All right, now that you've got all those screws, you can lift this up and lift carefully because you have to still remove this uh, CMOS battery connector. So while you lift that, let me see, that should be all the screws. Yep. Yep. Okay. So once you got all the screws, the board actually lifts from this side first. So you lift it at an angle. Okay. Um, again, be careful because this cable is still connected. All right. Now that you got it lifted up um, partially, you can pull the connector, the CMOS connector. Just grab it with your fingernails and then just wiggle it like this and it'll pop out. Okay. Now slowly and carefully continue lifting the board up all right and then guide this cable out so this board once it clears it'll come out and then you can guide this cable out underneath okay all right so if you want um, if you're working on the board you can remove this cable just know this side it's labeled mb so you know it goes to the motherboard and this side is labeled usb so you know it goes to the usb board okay so you can take this out and then also it faces um, the gold pins face down in the connector. Okay, so we'll set that aside. So here you can see, I don't know why they designed it like this, but they made it so everything um, that you can upgrade is on the bottom. It's kind of a dumb design, I think, to force people to buy like a pre-upgraded one so they don't have to mess with it. But there we go. So here you can see, uh, I need to clean up all these fans, they're pretty dusty, so I just brush them off, just like this, okay. And then I use a air compressor, I use a strong air blower or an air compressor to blow out the fins, because usually dust will build up on the inside here, and you want to get all that dust out, okay. So um, I'm going to show how to remove uh, at least one of the fans. So on the bottom, actually let me show what the components are first. So to remove the RAM, you just pull these two uh, clips aside and it'll pop up. So here you can see the RAM is PC4-2666V, um, okay, so DDR4 RAM. All right, so just slot that back in at an angle like that. And while it's slotted in, you can push this back down. Okay, just like that. Usually these I like to kind of remove and reinsert them just to sometimes corrosion builds up on it over time and when you do that it helps scrape it off a little bit. Okay. All right, so just pop that back in. Make sure the clips fully engage. Okay, push it down and then you can make sure to push it in. And then the SSD, it's it comes out just like the wireless card. You take out the one screw. You can pop it up slightly at an angle and wiggle it out. Um, this looks like a M.2 SATA SSD. I don't know why they didn't use an NVMe or PCIe. Um, I would think this would support it. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it's a gaming laptop and it's not that old, so I would think it would support it. Okay. So now I'll show you how to remove one of the fans, the specifically the GPU fan, because that's the one that's having the issue. But basically this will be the same process for both. Um, let's see, is there a clip on this one as well? There is a clip on this one as well. So it looks like the connector for the CPU fan would be more difficult to remove, or the the casing but um, I'll show you the GPU one just because that's what I need to repair so the GPU fan has two connectors here you'll want to disconnect those first um, put it on a solid surface so you don't flex the board you don't want to bend the board too much and then end up damaging it so just grab with your fingernails or if you can't reach with your fingernails you can pull the connector but just be careful um, and then while you're doing it just wiggle it up and down 
side to side and give a little um, pressure pulling on it. So as you keep wiggling it, it'll eventually pop out. So don't try and pull it out too quick because you can damage the connector. Just be, ge uh, be gentle and patient and it will eventually come. Okay, so peel this up. All right, move this adhesive out of the way. Okay, so same thing with this one. This one you can actually reach the connector with your fingernails. So if you can pull that because it's safer. All right, so you just grab with your fingernails and keep wiggling and it'll pop out just like that. Okay, so now that you got those out, there's some screws here. So you'll want to switch to uh, originally using like a PH or a J1 uh, screw. Now you got to switch to a PH0. Um, so there's one small screw up in this corner here. Okay, so undo that screw. All right, and then undo the screw down here. All right, and then there's one more screw holding it on this corner here. Okay, now that you got those, there's actually a clip also holding this. So when you flip this over, um, you can see here that there's this little metal piece sticking out. So that holds part of the fan in place. So right now, if you were to flip this, you can actually see if you pull on this, um, it creates a gap between the metal piece and that. Um, oh, there's actually one more screw here. So remove that one as well. There we go. I was wondering why it wasn't moving so much. Okay, now that you got that out, so as you can see, when you pull on this, it separates from the metal plate, um, but there's still uh, the plastic here that's kind of holding it, and then the little clip. So when you take the fan out, you're gonna actually have to rotate it a bit to get this out, okay? So this side will have to come up first, and then, um, and then, then the plastic part can slide away from the board. Okay, so to remove this part, um, what you need to do is you'll use like a flathead screwdriver or a small pry tool, thin pry tool like this. Um, and then just go between the fan and this tab and then just pull on that tab while you lift this fan up, okay? So you can lift from this metal piece here. All right, so pull on that. I think that should separate it. Oh, actually, yeah. Okay, it came up for a little bit, so just like that. So now you can see it lifted up and there's a gap. So now you should be able to move the, actually, is there another screw I missed? Oh, okay, I missed another screw. Okay, so there's one more screw in the middle here. Sorry about that. They camouflage really well. I guess I'm losing my eyesight. Okay, so remove that screw as well. All right, now that you got that tab pulled over, um, you should be able to lift the fan out. So lift, flip the tab to the side and then pull on the fan. Okay, there is an adhesive here as well holding this, so you'll have to peel this adhesive off. So get a corner of the adhesive. You don't need to peel it completely off. You can just, as long as it's no longer attached to this metal part of the fan, then you can peel it away. Okay, so pull that adhesive back just like this. All right, now that it's off and there's a little gap here, um, you should be able to lift the whole fan up unless I missed another screw. Okay, yeah, there you go. So as you see, the fan goes up this way and this plastic tab, it slides out. So when you put it back, make sure guide the wires through and, and also this plastic tab. Okay, now that we have this out, we can completely clean the fans. So you just brush it and then use an air blower or something. Um, to clean it up and then you can also see um, there's some dust build up here so as you can see here the dust is kind of building up there and then that's kind of why the computer over time it starts getting hotter and hotter because the dust just builds up so you'd have to get an air blower or air compressor some powerful air blower and just blow all the dust out um, you don't need to take the whole computer apart to do that but um, uh, what you can do is just blow through the vents on the side 
Um, if you do it often enough, then it'll prevent buildup and then you should be okay. Um, but that's pretty much how you take everything apart on here. Um, this fan is basically the same. It looks like there should be a tab here, but I don't see one. So maybe it's not held in because they put this adhesive strip here. So if you need to take out the CPU fan for some reason, um, basically same idea, remove all the screws, remove the connector, and then peel up this adhesive and you should be able to lift the fan out from this side. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's one thing I didn't mention, but on the bottom cover, there's a little battery CMOS reset button that connects here. So when the cover's on, you'll actually, there's a little hole with a symbol, like battery symbol on there. That's what that's for. Okay, so if your computer for some reason isn't starting up, you can try pushing that button and resetting the, the BIOS or the board. Okay, um, but that's pretty much it um, to clean the fan. Uh, I have a whole video on how you clean computer fans, but basically this fan, um, if this model is like the last one I worked on, you can lift these fins off just like this. So what you do is you clean off the, the post here and then you um, add a little grease here. I like to add a uh, mobile one um, oil, like some synthetic oil. Just put like a small drop, not like a, like not too much. If it goes over like out of this hole, then you'll want to clean it up with like a paper towel. And if it gets too much, you can use um, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol to clean up the residue. So usually what I'll do is I'll put the oil in there, put the fan on, spin it around, take it back out, clean it off again because sometimes there's debris caught in here. So because this design, it lets you pull it off. Most likely over time, dust kind of get, finds its way in there and it screws it up. So I'll put some grease, um, clean it up, spin it around, clean off all this, put some more grease in, do the same thing and repeat it until the grease that I wipe off comes clean. Um, but that's pretty much it, how you would fix the fan and take this whole computer apart. So the screen itself, the LCD, if you need to take this apart, what you do is you open the screen 90 degrees, um, make sure unroute all these wireless antennas and the LCD cable. Okay, and then when you have the screen open 90 degrees, you can hang it off a table and then just undo these screws and you can lift this the screen out from this. Okay, but that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please remember to like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. Bye.